<sighs> so I'm back and welcome back. In a previous video, I taught you guys how to do like a really, really cool VHS style look. Well, I got another way to do it. I kind of didn't want to put them together in the same video. I noticed the videos when I had multiple ways of doing something were getting quite long, like up to like 30 minutes. I'm like, uh, that's a bit long, especially for me. I don't like 30 minute tutorial videos. I like to keep it between 10 and 20 minutes. So I decided to cut this up and create another video for you guys. So this is the second VHS style look. It's a, um, it's a little bit more intricate, but it's actually my favorite one. So yeah. So I'm gonna be using this image to really kind of show you how to do the second style. It is a little bit more detailed than the other one. So yeah, that's why I have to make a second video. So please follow along. If I'm going too fast, please let me know in the comments. First things first, we're gonna change our aspect ratio to a four by five. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna click our crop tool. We're just gonna kind of inch our image around. That works. Hit enter. And now we're gonna go ahead, create a new layer, and we're gonna add our text to it. If you didn't see the first video, I'm using the VCR OSD Mono. You can get it from defont.com. It's an amazing site. So we're gonna go ahead and put in our text. So we'll put in our time, 12, and our date. Okay. Now this is gonna come into effect later when we throw an effect over the entire photo once we're done with all the small stuff. So you can just keep that there for now. So now we're gonna add a layer of noise to this layer one, to our fresh layer. Go filter, noise, add noise. It's a little too much. This was from the last image. Let's drop that down. That works to about 11. I'm gonna keep it on uniform and monochromatic. Now the amount of noise you do will depend on your image. That's completely up to you. Obviously different sized images, different resolutions will require a different amount of noise. So it's just about making sure you're comfortable with how much noise you have in your image. Our next step, we're gonna go ahead and create a fresh layer from this. And we're gonna come down here to these little dot, dot, dots. We're gonna use our single row marquee tool here. Now, if you're using either Photoshop 2019 or earlier, it will be up here in your rectangle marquee tool family. But since the 2020 updates, they moved them down here to this little extras tab. So we're gonna create a new layer. Click in the desired place. Now remember, if your image is large, it might not show. You may have to zoom in to actually see it. And we're gonna stretch these out like so by using our transform tool. We're gonna confirm our selection. And now we're gonna to go to filter, distort, and shear. You can see my shear is already set, so you can kinda of do it how you want. Just make sure your repeat edge pixels are selected. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna do this one more time. So now to repeat that filter selection, either you can go up to filter and click here, or if you're using PC like I am, control alt F and it will repeat the filter with all your settings. Let's go ahead and deselect that. I'm gonna do a couple more of these. I'm gonna do one down here by her knee. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm our selection and we're just gonna repeat that process like so. I'm gonna do one more slightly above her head. Confirm. There. Now these are a little sharp, 
So if you want, you can either mask it out to soften them up a little bit, or you can come over them with the rectangular marquee tool and offer a little bit more distortion to it. So that way it blends your lines a little better. I'm actually going to get this one out just a little bit. There. We're gonna go ahead and take these two layers, merge these two. And now we're going to apply a hue and saturation layer. We're going to discolor it just a little bit to give it more of a glitchy feel. So either you can go a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. It doesn't have to be a whole lot because you only need to have just a little bit of color disruption. I'm gonna drop our saturation too. There. That looks good. And so for our next step, we're going to go ahead and apply the image. Now, we need to click on this layer here to make sure our new layer comes on top. And we're gonna to go to image and apply image. Fuck. All right, there it is. Now we're gonna to go to image and apply image. Just leave all the settings as they are. And now we have everything flattened to one image. Now next we're gonna tweak our channels a little bit. So let's go over here to channels and we're gonna select just the red. So we're gonna to go to filter, we're going to apply a new shear to it. Now I really haven't figured out how to delete the new points yet, so I'm just kind of sliding them all back to the center. There you go. Now there's two ways you could have done this. Either you could have did it like in the last video and use the warp to do it, or you could do it this way. But see, this shear's a little bit much for me. So I'm gonna go back and do it again. Now, this still might be a bit much. No, that's actually perfect. That is perfect. Because we actually can go in and kinda clean up the face a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna create a layer mask. Just kind of clean up the face just a little bit. So I really want her face to show. I'm gonna go ahead and look down the rest of her body, make sure if there's nothing else I wanna kind of clean up. Which I don't, I really like. Actually, I'm gonna clean up her leg a little bit. I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna do just like I did in the last one, just kind of leave the skin unfiltered. That's perfect, I love this, I love this. So what we're gonna do from all this, we don't need our text layer. We're just gonna create a new layer from all of this and just smash it all together. And now the next part is we're gonna do a little bit of micro distortions. Normally you would use your single row marquee tool for this, but because it really won't have that much of an effect on an image of this size, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool but if you can use the single row marquee tool, by all means, please do. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna kinda go across in very thin lines. And just make sure that when you do this, that this is selected. So that way you can always add to your selections and it doesn't delete your old selection. I don't know how many times that I've done that and then realized, oh, duh. Now what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna go to filter, stylize, and wind. So as you can see, my wind isn't selected. I forgot this is a 16-bit image. Wind is an 8-bit effect. So if you are in that shape, you just go to image mode and change it to an 8-bit channel. 
So now we can go to filter, stylize, and now we can add our wind effect. And we want to change it from method of wind to blast, and we want to go from left to right. And click OK. Now you really can't see it because of your, your selection, your marching ants will cover it. But I'm going to do it one more time and hit deselect. And there we go. Now we have these little lines coming across our image. And just like I said before, we're going to go ahead and mask these out. And again, it's pretty random on how you want to do them because these lines are generally random in nature. And now for the final step, we're going to apply a shear over the entire image itself. And now we're going to take all of our layers outside of our text layer, create a new layer with it. And we're going to apply an effect over the entire image itself. And we're going to use shear because now we want to do the waviness with the entire image. Now remember, this doesn't have to be a lot. You don't have to move these a lot. So there we have it. And I really don't want her face to be distorted. So I'm actually going to mask that out. If you want to know how I'm doing this, I'm actually using my alt key and my left mouse button to adjust my size and hardness of my brush. Kind of bring this in right to that distortion right there. And voila, we have our second VHS style effect. So yeah, I hope this helps you out. And that's it. That's the second way I do it. Um, this one was a little bit more complicated than the first one, but the result, I love it. Love the result. Um, this is the one I tend to use a little bit more often. So please use it. Share this with your friends. Like, comment, subscribe. I love it all. Um, and, you know, I'll see you guys in the next one. I will be doing another video on uh, Technicolor. On the like the whole vintage Technicolor, I'm having like this whole vintage craze right now. So I will be doing another video on like the whole vintage Technicolor look. So please look out for that one. And uh, peace. Catch you next time.